It is true that every nation or state has its own process, character and peculiarities of evolution, growth and development, and the time or period taken in this process differ based on background, experience, circumstances, resources and composition. States also at a point in time and in process of growth and development reflect back to the past in order to judge the present and plan well for the future. From independence, Nigeria went through a civilian democratic regime of the First Republic, military rule, civil war, then from another civilian regime to military administration, and currently under a democratic rule. Nigeria, being the most populous black nation and one of the richest African countries, as well as one of the largest producers of oil in the world, has vast geopolitical and ethnic groups. 60 years in the life of a man must be riddled with lots of ups and downs. As Nigeria attains 60 years of existence as a nation, how has the journey been so far? Is the country on the right track? And where is Nigeria moving from here? These are more will be discussed on Satellite tonight. Good evening and welcome. I am Jude Abugu, your regular host. Sixty years of age is regarded as the diamond age, the most precious and hardest naturally formed mineral yet known. Since the Union Jack was lowered and Nigerian flag hoisted on 1st October 1960, the story of Nigeria has remained like that of fine wine which gets better with age. As Nigeria attains 60 years of independence, how has the country fared over this year? Nena Adobe Kovasi reports. At 60, many believe that Nigeria has successfully navigated the vicissitudes of life, irrespective of global environment full of threats from different directions, including the latest, which is COVID-19 pandemic. Respondents, while praising the sacrifices and imputes of those who genuinely put in efforts at sustaining democracy and rule of law in Nigeria, believes, however, that a lot still needs to be done. A 60-year-old country, journey to nationhood. The level of what we call divisive tendency, you know, that uh, we now face is much. Our heroes past worked hard to get this country together. The 1979 constitution has remained the model guideline for governance, which has however seen several amendments and suspensions for decrees by the military regime. Nigerians are of the view that leaders should go back to the drawing board and resuscitate the binding force. Uh, I will sincerely apologize for that uh, technical such life continues after this break. Stay with us. Taking proactive safety measures to contain the coronavirus disease pandemic. These measures include the release of 330 million naira only, strengthening the coronavirus disease preparedness and response. Out of this sum, 150 million naira only is dedicated to purchase of additional ambulances and incident vehicles, personal protective equipment, upgrade of state infectious disease isolation center, training of health workers, advocacy and public enlightenment. The sum of 80 million naira only is for the stopping of the state drug revolving scheme, while the remaining 100 million naira only is provision for unforeseen public health challenges. to know you are still there. Welcome back. We will take you back to our earlier report that was interrupted.
At 60, many believe that Nigeria has successfully navigated the vicissitudes of life, irrespective of global environment full of threats from different directions, including the latest, which is COVID-19 pandemic. Respondents, while praising the sacrifices and inputs of those who genuinely put in efforts at sustaining democracy and rule of law in Nigeria, believes, however, that a lot still needs to be done. A 60-year-old country, journey to nationhood. The level of what we call divisive tendency, you know, that uh, we now face is much. Our heroes past worked hard to get this country together. The 1979 constitution has remained the model guideline for governance, which has, however, seen several amendments and suspensions for decrees by the military regime. Nigerians are of the view that leaders should go back to the drawing board and resuscitate the binding force, which has kept Nigeria as one indivisible entity as espoused by our founding fathers. In those days, you hardly knew where people came from. Some of my closest friends were northerners, Yorubas. Nobody cared where people came from. We communicated and nobody was seen as an indigenous or non-indigenous. It appears that the war beastified and removed the fabric of unity in Nigeria. Politically, Nigeria has practiced the multi-party system. However, since the Third Republic, there's been an uninterrupted democracy 21 years and still counting. With the coronavirus pandemic, which put all sectors of economy on hold, it is believed that lessons learned will be implemented with the gradual reopening of the economy. So if we can take care of our youths, we can actually take care of the problems that Nigeria eventually is passing through now. All in all, Nigeria is a unified country because if what happens in Nigeria happens elsewhere, there will be surely be a breakup. Respondents help that more attention be given to insurgency and security, employment and establishment of industries, as well as education and health, and reduce causes of incessant strike actions by labor, make policies less attractive, and be more committed to peace and unity of Nigeria. In Enugu, Mina Adobe Kobasi, NTN News. Thank you, Mena, for that background report. And uh, still on Nigeria at 60, we have uh, Comrade Ben Asoba, who is the Chairman, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, Enugu State, in the studio for tonight's discussion. Comrade Ben, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening, listeners. All right, and uh, our regular guest, uh, you all know, Professor Jehu Onyekorenaji a professor of international law and global politics, University of Kansas, United States. Prof, you are welcome to set Thank you, and good evening, viewers. All right, and I'll be starting with you. We've been talking about uh, Nigeria at 60, but uh, if you are to describe Nigeria at 60, how would you describe Nigeria? A fulfilled nation, uh, nation stay evolving? Yes, very well. Uh, Nigeria has uh, gone through a lot of uh, metamorphosis. From 1960 to date is a period of 60 years. Then what we have to put in perspective is the level of governance we've received democratically. Uh, as we are well aware, uh, when Nigeria became post-independent in 19th, October 1, to be precise, that you know, ushered in the uh, first indigenous governor general of Nigeria, who that was in the person of that honorable Dr. Nanda Zikro of blessed memory. Of course, that lasted for three years, and eventually we became Republic in uh, 1963 again, and uh, of course, Dr. Nanda was there as the first uh, titular head of state. We were using the Westminster process of uh, governance, which we borrowed from our colonial masters. Now, of course, from that, and we now started experiencing the military rule, which from 1960 to 1979, before we had the first uh, democratic elected president, which was, which was uh, Sheikh Usman Ali Ushagare. All these put in perspective was there were impediments to our development. Because of course, you know, as we are well aware, democracy is the government of the people. And the people are for the people. Because if we have to look at the meaning of democracy from its, uh, you know, original uh, coinage from the Greek words, now they form democracy, which is demos and kratos. You see that uh, demos means the people and kratos means rule. So all this put in perspective, how many years have we done the rule by the people? So of course, the continuous rule by the people started in 1999. So from that period till now, we have to one years. 
So someone who is 21 years is already just going through the teen age and then becoming an adult. Of course, Nigeria is a nascent democracy, if you permit me to say so. So all this put in perspective, we see that Nigeria has gone through teaching problems and is trying to develop. Then again, these rules have not been well internalized because good governance and democracy are just two things that work together. They are both related and you know intertwined. So if we have to look at good governance and dividends of democracy, we'll see that most of them have been elusive because the leaders have not been able to internalize the thinness of democracy to such an extent that the, the, the populace will enjoy full uh, you know, governance as, at the, the, the level that it is well uh, you know, intended. So okay. these are some of the things we have seen yes. over time. Let's hear from my comrade Ben as well. You can see the story of Nigeria from 1960 to date. Are there some uh, historical events or, the, or some things that you will point out and say they have shaped Nigeria the way it has become or in the direction Nigeria is currently moving? Anyway, if you look at uh, our country, having stayed together for 60 years, um, I can say that uh, we are forging ahead. However, when you look at so many things, you find out that we are not yet where we are supposed to be. For instance, we are still running a system I can describe as mono-economy because our economy is still dependent on oil when we have many other natural resources. For instance, the agricultural aspects and so many other aspects. They have not been well harnessed. We are all looking at oil. And if you look at the problems we have all this while, it's like we are passing our problems from decade to decade because they are the same issues. Take, for instance, the recent issue of our deregulation. The deregulation issue has been there, and subsidy aspect. We've been talking about it year in year out. Even the uh, government of uh, Odisha Gunnar Basanjo had a little chunk of it. The, uh, the one of um, um, uh, Good Luck Jonathan had a part of it. Then even the present government is still talking about it. And that shows that we are not actually being sincere to ourselves. And then when we talk about togetherness in this country, a lot of factors are working against that. Yes, historically, we can say that our forefathers fought with one mind. They had Nigeria at heart. And if you call in those days, I wasn't there, but I know that historically, if you call an Amdajik as if he were to talk about Nigeria, he will not talk as an Igbo man. He will talk as a Nigerian. If you call a Wolo to talk, he will not look at his tribe. He will rather talk as a Nigerian. But today, when you bring up issues, you find out that everybody discusses issues based on where you are coming from. It has now become a tribal ma matter. We are now allowing our tribal um, strength to overwhelm the national interest. And that shows that actually, yes, historically we are not following what our forefathers left behind because they left behind selflessness and onenessness. But what we are now perpetrate, perpetrating today has to do with a lot of divisive, divisive approaches and policies. All right, thank you. Uh, pro Prof, you've heard uh, our colleague here talking about how uh, our individual differences, uh, maybe as uh, people from different ethnic groups, have uh, affected uh, the vision our forefathers had. Would you blame uh, nepotism? You know it was one of the reasons the military struck and, uh, uh, and stopped the First Republic. Will you blame this uh, ethnicism, nepotism, as a part of the reason why Nigeria is not uh, where it ought to be by now? Yes, very good question. You see, I always say something. If somebody sets out on a journey and is heading to a destination and somewhere midway, the person forgets where the person started the journey, then the person doesn't know where he's going. You see, uh, first and foremost, if you want to build a house, there's a foundation. So that foundation is like the substructure that carries the building. Our founding fathers knew so much more than we do know now. Because going by the time they existed, most of the technological advancements have not existed, and yet they were able to do things the way they did. I remember in, in his own words, Dr. Nambasiko said he put about 35 years of his age in fighting for the independence of Nigeria. I mean, if he knows that today we are trying to create confusions here and there, he will roll in his grave. Because, of course, this is a man that went to the United States and studied and then came back with a doctorate degree in the 1930s. So, of course, he knew that Nigeria being independent was something that would be the realization of his dream. And he said, his own words, I quote again, that it didn't matter whether it was him, Dr. Nandasikwe, or Sadana of Sokoto, or uh, Chief Awolowo, that would be the first prime minister. 
And of course, he settled to be the titular head of state by being the president, which of course was subservient to the prime minister, who was, you know, the calling the shots, going by the Westminster process. But the man was altruistic to that extent. He didn't call for off evil or a vote or anything, but he wanted that oneness. So oneness of purpose is more important because there is unity in diversity. Nigeria has over 250, uh, 250 ethnic groups and then uh, over 500 languages. There should be unity in diversity. Of course, tourism should have been an aspect we could harness from this diversity. See, I see people uh, having taught in the United States universities and Europe, and I know that people travel from far and wide to go and eat a particular type of food. The food we eat, I'm an Eastern, I'm from Enugu State. Some other person from Imo State has a very type of food from that one of Enugu State. Of course, people go from one place to, to go and enjoy a particular cuisine. So you can see if we can harness our cuisine such a way that people can enjoy our different dishes. People can travel far and wide, come here, and it will be a source of uh, foreign uh, exchange. Right. You know, we shouldn't depend on uh, oil as a petrol economy. Of course, we should diversify in terms of all aspects that have made us to be whole. All right, Comrade Ben, you talked about uh, this issue of uh, unity and uh, ethnicity in Nigeria. I would like you to proffer some ways through which Nigerians can be more united. I'm thinking about Nigeria as a nation. I'm not thinking about their uh, uh, ethnic groups. In the first place, that starts with our leaders. You know, in a situation where you have leaders that still have that sentiment, things can never work. For instance, you come to a country up to date. If you, if a child applies for admission into the university, we still have uh, um, some kind system. of quotas, quota system, and that shows that even from childhood, the person will start noticing that a man from the east is different from somebody from the north, and that person from the north is different from somebody from the West. And we've already started building into him that system of feeling that we are not equal. We are not like building an animal farm where all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. So our leaders should be sincere to themselves. And when issues come up, okay, let, let's talk about the security aspect. If you look at what is going on in the country today, take for instance in the North, Northeast, we have the issue of Boko Haram, and it has become a threat to this nation. And then how are the leaders handling it? Sometimes you, they make it look like it is a dream we are having or we are not even sure of what we are facing. But when we have issue of terrorism, it has to be taken seriously. We have to understand what those people have in mind and why is it now happening to us this way? Because even as a nation, we brought, we brought in religious sentiment instead of putting all those things aside and hold, holding Nigeria first. Because why should it be that if you come out to talk as a Nigerian, you begin to think of the religious group you belong to? Why should we even have a nation where our religious belief must interfere in our right. governance, in, right. in our leadership style? So if we didn't change all these things and build in the minds of youths that spirit of oneness and equality, don't do should you it think be in the process of the education or? A kind of reorientation. Reorientation. Even that reorientation must come from our leaders because they must inculcate in the youths, the uh, upcoming ones, that culture of oneness, which was what our founding fathers left behind that they didn't carry on to us. All right. Uh, Prof, many a times uh, some uh, scholars, uh, politicians, and uh, uh, the people that have been in power, they keep clamoring for restructuring of Nigeria. And I would like to ask, do you subscribe to that idea? And if restructuring is actually a solution to the uh, problems we are having in Nigeria uh, politically and uh, leadership-wise? Yeah, good question. See, Nigeria is a very big country, like I said in my opening salvo. There are so many constituents that are, if put together, make us a complete whole. So if we continue to be talking about rhetorics in Nigeria, we'll never solve this problem. I keep telling people, I remember before Nigeria became, uh, you know, uh, I had the Abuja as this capital, 1991. I traveled to the north, and uh, I was driven by a northerner, and I didn't know the man from Adam. I stayed in his house, he gave me food, gave me water, took my bath, and everything went well. But now, it, it can't happen. People become so, you know, so suspicious of one another. I mean, we should remember how we lived, you know. We came through a civil war, 30 months uh, civil war, and uh, that taught us a lesson, you know, which ended no victor, no vanquished. So there are certain things we can internalize. I know that there should be differences in uh, culture, but of course those differences are supposed to be things that can make us, you know, bind us together. Because even in the United States, it's multilingual and multi-ethnic. And you have the Hispanics, you have the uh, Caucasians, you have those from uh, Latin America and elsewhere. So, but they move together. I mean, there should be a law. And one thing I would subscribe to is where we do not 
remember where we come from. We should see ourselves as Nigerians, you know, regardless of where you are born. Even where you are resident makes you a citizen of that place. You are equal to the law, and the law is equal to everyone. So I believe that if they talk about restructuring, we should look at the many things that will make us to be one, not just rhetorics. I mean, I remember those days before the advent of uh, JAM. You know, people were uh, going to universities. When you finish secondary school, you go to the normal university admission until 1970 when JAM came. Of course, again, going backward, you know, in time, we remember 1973 was when uh, Governor Adjusen brought in a National Youth Service Corps just to integrate. So we can see how, say, when you finish from, let's say, University of Benin or University of Soka, in Nigeria, Soka, you move elsewhere to go and serve. So these things are meant to internalize and to integrate us. Uh, so we should, we should go back to that. Are you uh, comfortable with the current uh, constitution of Nigeria? Uh, it keeps, uh, uh, they keep, people keep reminding us about true federalism. Is it well entrenched in this constitution? Mm -hmm. Or should it be part of what will be restructured? No, not necessarily. I have a doctorate degree in constitutional law, and okay. I would say no, it is not true. We need to add something to the constitution because okay. the constitution itself has long, you know, done its uh, work. It should be it's updated. We need to integrate other things into the constitution. That's why you have amendments to the constitution, like even having the United States. Because of our diversity, we need to bring other aspects to the constitution to make it more general and internalized. All right. And to you, comrade uh, Asogwa, you are a labor leader. You feel the pulse of the workers and ordinary Nigerians. What do you think is the uh, most pressing need of uh, Nigerians, even as we celebrate this 60th year, the year anniversary of Nigeria? Yeah, we need sincerity from our leaders because if you look at uh, the, uh, the masks, they are really suffering. The, the economic situation in Nigeria is actually eating deep into the fabric of this nation, and the citizens are really suffering it. So, Nigerians need even food, shelter, and clothing. These few things that make life desirable are lacking in this country. They don't even have social security, meaningful social security in this country. Even the little one we have called subsidy is now gone. Where do the common man get something from this nation as a Nigerian? All right, Prof, um, your closing remarks, where do you see Nigeria in the next 10 years, 20 years? Do you th see things getting better? Absolutely, where there is a way, there is a way. I believe that Nigeria will get better, but if we start now, to teach our children the best way to live together, and like I said before, if you meet, I'm from the East, if you go to US or elsewhere in Europe, you meet someone from uh, the western part of Nigeria, you see him as your brother or your sister, we eat together, we do things together. But when we come back here, we begin to do division and uh, start to see ourselves as different. So the way we see ourselves outside, the same way we should see ourselves inside. So we should do things and improve our society. So I believe that in 10 years, 20 years, things will be better if we start now. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your interventions on Searchlight Tonight. And to you, our viewers, you have heard it from our guests. We need to work together as one nation, one people, for Nigeria to move to the next level. This is the much we can give you on Searchlight tonight. Our Searchlight will still come your way the same time next week. Good night.